What's up, everybody? It's uh, three o'clock, which means we're um, we're over the time that uh, that uh, Canon Global uh, has had for for their announcement, etc. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. every, that everyone that's interested has watched that everything. There'll be questions afterwards. No, no, they won't. Um, <laughs> so, so today is the uh, the announcement, the launch of um, the Canon Canon EOS R5, EOS R6, uh, 800 mil, 600 mil. 100, 500, uh, two extenders, the 1.4 and two times, and probably some other stuff, but I stopped at the R5. Um, yes. and, and today we've got uh, Roger Majin from, uh, from Canon, who is, um, is gonna be taking us through some, uh, some fantastic bits and pieces. I, I've been fortunate enough to have my hands on the R5 and uh, the 800 and 600 in the last couple of days, and it is phenomenal. Um, I mean, I'm not just saying that because um, I, I have a, a Canon L uh, tattoo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. For me, and, and I've, I think I've said it uh, once before, uh, it's, it's, it's basically um, a DX3 because it can shoot a million frames a second. Okay, 20. Um, and 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 the 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 the, the autofocus. Feel my thunder. Carry on. It's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> this is the last time I'm going to be talking for the next hour. So I'm just taking everything yeah, I can. Yeah. Guys, it is no. amazing. Roger, go. Okay, no, no, we, the, we, this is meant to be a, a sort of Q&R <laughs> se session. Um, yeah, the, majority, the majority of the specs uh, have pretty much been either sort of leaked or yeah. revealed in the last hour, the confirmation of a lot of things. Um, what I wanted to do with this kind of thing, because you and I have uh, had a couple of discussions about the cameras, about the lens over the last couple of weeks, and um, you, know, you signed that lovely little non-disclosure agreement in blood <laughs> to make sure that um, you can tell anybody about that must be driving you bloody nuts. <laughs> I, I, but, have, um, I have one finger less to show for it. <laughs> <laughs> Th th thanks again for the opportunity. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's fun times. I've got to tell you, we we, we love embargo dates uh, on a regular basis. The, the day that when we finally announce the products, we hate when things get leaked. Uh, it, it sucks big time because it steals a lot of the thunder, a lot of the excitement that we have. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff was, was leaked. And, and as we're closer, closer, closer to the dates, pretty much all the final specs are out there. So I don't really want to hammer on some specs, but um, we are going to talk about each of the products individually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show I uh, talk about sort of personal experiences and um, I'm going to be sharing my desktop we'll show you some of the pictures I've been taking with them um, I, I, I'm loath to, to use the words go game changer and I've been very loath for a very very long time because you know the DX and the DX2 were both radically epic cameras that most certainly changed their respective games um, as was the DX3. Um, EOS R was an interesting development what an incredible camera and I mean I, I'm using one now as as, as are you uh, we, we love them to pieces what an incredible camera but it wasn't a major revolution it wasn't a huge change almost every single thing seemed to be this little bit oh it's a tweak of that and they've modified yeah. this etc there was nothing that was like a giant leap you know granted the 2870 f2 Unheard of, you know, <laughs> and, and, and paralleled in the science fiction. That, that is a game-changing lens. It is something that most certainly opens new parameters and opens new possibilities. I'd, I just, I'd, I'd I, like to know where, where the update is for the extra, um, you know, four degrees. Um, that I'm going to be missing from my 24. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, stand half a meter further back. You know, <laughs> exactly. you know, just, you know, just deal with it. You know, so it, is, it is what it is. But you know, we, we, we've had a couple of cameras that, that in the past that would, would, would be considered sort of cha game changers. You know, the, the, the 5 DSR, which is one, one of my, my favorite of all time, uh, uh, the first to achieve the 50 million pixel milestone. It was in, enormous. The 1124 lens, the, the, the widest rectilinear zoom ever made you know the, the 8 to 15 mole fisheye every single thing that we've done that was really 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 mind altering uh, or radically different still wasn't game changing and all of a sudden um, this little beast uh, the, the little EOS R5 um, oh and, and and this little beast the EOS R6 um, for the first time ever I can actually say for my kind of photography and for what I've been doing more than anything else recently, uh, which is sort of bird action, etc., cetera, um, they've changed the game. They've changed what I do and they've changed how I shoot on such a radical way that um, 
as, oh, I hate saying it, and a lot of you know our competitors are, yeah, this is a game changer. And I've, I've never wanted to say it, but finally, I, I think we're there. Um, the the R5, you know, as, as you probably well already know, all the video specs were leaked, and it was all all about. Um, showing people that we could go to another degree that we could go another step further it wasn't about catching up with our competitors it was about leapfrogging so where everybody was expecting us to do a 4k 60p camera we did a 4k 120 camera which was also an 8k 30 absolutely ludicrous no camera in that size shape way or form has ever done 8k so we did that um it, 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 you know, in raw on, on the camera itself uh, and, and without without cropping um at 30 frames a second and, and half the internet was like yeah i know that's rubbish that's no, no, never gonna happen it's never gonna happen. and we had never. to do another announcement to say no no it's definitely happening not only the 8k so the video capabilities have just been spouted left right and center for one of the greatest things that canon essentially did on that was they kept the the, the photographic specs kind of quiet so um you know obviously you might have already found out you know obviously from the the announcements the last hour we can confirm yes it's a 45 million pixel camera yes it's 12 frames a second mechanical yes it goes up to 20 frames a second in the electronic and um, that's all powered by this brand new 45 million pixel sensor and the digic x processor and the only way we can do that is with these uh stupendously fast cf uh cf express cards uh, so this camera's got two card slots, a CF Express and an SD UHS-2. It's got the jog dial on the back, which is what all the photographers wanted. No more of that slidey experiment we put on the EOS R. But you can um, still use it, your thumb to, uh, to select oh, absolutely. the Absolutely. Traditional autofocus still, still yeah. works as and how you like. Um, dials as you're used to, shutter speed dial over there, f-stop on the back, but now you've also got another dial over here um, that you can set for ISO. And when you add that sort of combination of uh, shutter speed, f-stop, ISO, and then the control ring on the lens mm -hmm. for exposure compensation, everything is now sort of ergonomically designed for, for pros to handle beautifully. And, and it becomes incredibly easy. Now, you know, 45 million pixels, 20 frames a second is, is a massive achievement. I mean, it really is incredible. And the burst is, is a good sort of 180 odd frames um, in, in RAW and, and in JPEG, like almost like 300, 400 frames, which is kind of ridiculous. And again, sort of very dependent on the, on the speed of the card, the CF Express mm. card, the higher the capacity, the faster the speed. But um, that wasn't it. That's not the game changing thing about it. The game changing thing about it is the, um, the animal and bird eye autofocus. And you know, we, we saw a hint of how the human eye autofocus would come about with the EOS R, uh, with the EOS RP and the firmware updates. So we did version 1.4, et cetera. And it gave you an idea of where to from here. But I don't think the world kind of realized where this one comes in. And from a from a human eye per perspective, it is astonishing. But from a bird and an animal eye per perspective, it's a, a total and utter radical uh, departure. And the brilliance about that is for for our target market, our audience who shoot sports on a weekend with their kids and the you know the school sports days or you know the local rugby match or whatever the case may be, and then go off to shoot you know wildlife or spend their weekend at in Taka or Mari Vale or you know whatever the bird sanctuary is. Um, you know, wildlife and bird photography is something that's incredibly easy for us to do. And, and as such, it's become an incredibly big hobby. And, uh, you know, the testament to that is that the sheer hundreds and thousands of ER72 and 100, 400 lenses we've sold over the years. Um, and not to mention, you know, the, the, the great whites in the background, you know, we've, we've sold tons and tons of those. Um, at the end of the day, our market loves, loves that kind of thing. And this, for that particular mentality, goes to another degree so you know not just about the r5 I and mean, the r6 as the smaller lightweight cousin um it's almost identical spec to the dx3 in that it's a 20 million pixels uh, 12 frames a second mechanical 20 frames a second uh electronic dual card slots that jog shuttle jog, jog dial on the back there it's a little bit more of the, the sort of basic kind of build with a, with a, a control over there rather than the LCD panel. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more simple, 
uh, two card slots. It's two SD cards rather than two uh, CF Express, and it doesn't do the 8K like that. Obviously, the R5, the R5 is the beast. Sure. But you know, it's 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 quite a lot more expensive, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit further down. But um, the R6 is 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 probably the the, the market camera that that South Africa is going to love and adopt on a major scale. They're going to love it to absolute pieces. Um, it, for everybody who's had a 72 and been waiting for the replacement 73, which, you know, let's face it, is very, very, very unlikely to come along. You know, the 90D came along as a really nice little stopgap, giving you the crop sensor, giving you 20 frames, uh, 10 frames a second, and giving you, uh, you know, 30 odd million pixels. So you've got a bit of a resolution there. But the autofocus tracking wasn't as good as the 7D. This now comes along as a total and utter different beast. It's almost exactly the same spec as a DX3, which is more than double the price um, in terms of performance capabilities. High ISO, big big sensor. It, it looks and handles and feels like a DX3, and in some cases, I actually think it's even faster than the DX3. And it's quite sad. You know, my, my DX3 is <laughs> sitting here, and I'll, I can show you the, the, <laughs> the, co the cobwebs on it. it, it it's 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 devastating. That. Um, that optical viewfinder, that um, traditional DSLR build, that camera I can use to hammer nails into the wall. The DX3 is is just something that's um, <coughs> sorry going to, going to become a different um, different animal because this is uh, as the as the R6 comes into the market is most certainly going to have a major impact. Um, and it's like the 7D2 had when the um, Sorry, the 71 ad when the uh, EOS 1D Mark IV um, was on the market. 1D Mark IV sales started dropping because people bought the, the 7D. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Nikon had exactly the same thing when they launched their uh, D700 at the same time as their D3S, etc. It was a, a lighter, smaller crop sensor build that also had incredible speed uh, at a lower price. And as I said, I know for a fact that R6 is going to have that impact. So, you know, without sort of going too much into all the specifications on them, the, the radical thing that I really want to spend time talking about is not only those cameras, Cameras, but also the the new lenses, but also more than anything else, the the autofocus system. Um, and I, I hope you'll let me share my screen because what you, I'm going to do. Are you doing that? Um, yeah. From from my point of view, the it, it kind of becomes like um, uh, the ultimate camera because yeah. I can I can shoot birds. Be, be, you know, the Five D Mark IV. Um, it, it was fantastic. I absolutely loved that camera. But yeah. the, you know, at at what was it? Six frames a, a second. Um, yeah. You know, you uh, you kind of tend to get, get action either just before it happens or just after it, and, and never get the the full spread. Whereas this, yeah. um, you know, you've got the, all the the shutter speed that uh, that you could possibly need at twenty frames a, a second, um, yeah. and um, and so that's the weekend stuff. But then during the week when you need uh, to be shooting commercial stuff, um, the the you know the forty five megapixel sensor is yeah. fantastic. You know, that's that's sure. exactly where where I would have wanted a camera to be. So I'm 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 really really excited about uh, this one. And then also yeah. before you keep before you go, um, <laughs> uh, uh, there's a question. I can't remember who it was from. Um, uh, from Martin Ashworth. When will the local stores have stock? And then also from Chris Vessels. What's the dynamic range like? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that and, cool. and we'll go into a little bit more depth uh, as we go a little bit further along. I, I think first I'm going to jump straight in with with the the, the hero shot um taken literally <laughs> yesterday um we, we dashed up to the to the other farm very very quickly to grab a couple more uh cutaway shots for for this particular presentation um I, can you see my screen i hope you can see yep, the, yep, the, the yep, lovely yep. little just uh, want to just move your, move yeah. your mouse to the side because then that when that thing does okay. come up it, uh, it comes up um yeah, so there, yeah, we go. there we go, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, and essentially, this is the raw file. All I'm going to be showing you today is, is raw files, either from pre-production or from beta version cameras. And uh, this is yesterday. This is the EOS R6 uh, with the RF 600 millimeter lens. We're going to talk about those lenses shortly, um, just to give you an idea of what this is capable of doing. Now, theoretically, you should see the red square giving you an idea of where the the autofocus uh, locked onto the cat, onto the bird. And as you can see there from, uh, we're in manual exposure, EOS R6, 600 mil F11, uh, currently at 600 mil, uh, ISO speed around about 2500 uh, at F11. And uh, I'm gonna zoom back out again so, so we can get sort of a whole picture. And as you can see, basic unsharp mask and pretty much everything else, uh, saturation plus one, contrast plus one. Um, this is pretty much straight out of the camera. And again, this is the raw file. I haven't tweaked it, hadn't photoshopped it. It's the raw file. You can see the .CR3 extension at the top there. And if 
this camera 20 million pixels on a sub 15 or you know, 15 odd thousand rand 600 mil lens is delivering this at f11 i think uh, joe public's going to be pretty damn ecstatic with that straight off the bat so i'm going to talk a little bit more about the 600 mil f11 because there's a lot of already sort of people saying oh you're not going to be able to blur the background because you know, f11 is is, is kind of crazy and, and and my argument to that is you know knowing what you know about um, photography, you can blur backgrounds, you can do quite uh, amazing things. And again, I'm gonna just click on that just so you can get an idea um, where the autofocus point is here. Now I'm using uh, animal eye tracking autofocus and I switch it specifically, um, not just animal priority, but also eye priority. And I'm now using a good, um, using the, the F11, I'm using around 60% uh, horizontally, about 40% vertically in the middle of the frame and letting the, the camera find uh, the bird's eye on its own. And as you can see in this situation, not really had a problem with that. You can see where the square is locked on that bird. When you consider, um, and again, I'm going to try and zoom out, the amount of pixels that bird's eye actually represents, considering this entire frame is 20 million. Um, that's minute. It's absolutely <laughs> tiny. It really, really, really is. The capability of this camera, I say this camera, these cameras, because the autofocus system is identical on both of them, to, to pick up a bird's eye in the, the most cluttered of environments, the most difficult of environments, and, and lock on and hold it is, is beyond any comprehension. Roger, I think the, the one thing you know, that, um, that you, that you uh, might have glossed over there is the fact that um, you know, that, that, that central area at F11, obviously it's, it's not the, the full um, area, but if you, yeah. if you have the bird's head um, or the bird's body within that area and you half press, yeah. the, the autofocus yeah, focus system automatically finds the body, then goes yeah. to the head, then goes to the eye. Without yeah. you having to recompose and adjust, and it, 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 that happens automatically and in some cases yeah. it's almost instant. In milliseconds, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And again, here, you know, the, the eye here, for example, you know, it's a black eye against a red background. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's going to capture that. It's going to have, have a good chance. But again, still, still shooting at F11. Yes, it is a slightly cluttered image. But in the greater scheme of things, look at that background. It is really, 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 really clean. And what we've noticed is that people have this mindset about what F11 actually is. Uh, and they, they based it on using a 2470 or a 7200 lens, not necessarily about using a, um, uh, you know, the, like a, a 600 mil. Now, what we know is like you know, on the 600 mil at its closest focus, F11 depth of field is around about six centimeters. That's really nothing um, in the greater scheme of things. It doesn't really sound like a hell of a lot. So here's something uh, I'm gonna just throw, throw at you a little bit uh, just as another ballpark, uh, another little statistic. This is um, the EOS R6. And, and just to give you an idea, again, this is the raw file directly from, from the camera. I'm going to just click info over here. We've got the EOS R6, 800 mil, uh, sorry, 600 mil F11 at 12,800 ISO. Now, the beauty of this 20 million pixel sensor, it comes from that full frame 20 million heritage we've had going to the DX3, to the DX2. The noise control is truly and utterly spectacular. At 12,800 ISO, this camera is delivering the level of detail and the level of noise control that we saw a couple of years ago in like, you know, 300, 400, 500 ISO. If I look at this and you looked at this and you, I said to you, this is 12,800 ISO, not a, hell, not, not a chance, would you even no. consider? But, and, and again, uh, it, it is absolutely stunning. Um, and where people say, oh my God, you know, F11 is gonna mean you can, you can only use it in the broadest of daylight situations. Um, I say not at all. When, when we first went out yesterday morning, the, um, it was horrendously overcast. And the um, majority of birds are quite gray, quite dark. They're very furtive. They've spent a lot of time in very, very deep shadow areas in the thick of the tree. And this was an, in the overcast morning. Um, and this is, uh, again, on the 600 mil F11. This is now at 25,600 ISO. Uh, yes, there is noise in this image, make no mistake. The autofocus is locked on, not only onto the bird's head, it's, it's, it's not quite on the eye, but it's in the right zone. Um, essentially, it, it's, um, it wasn't enough light under there to get the eye specifically, but it's bloody sharp, number one. And number two, for 25,600 eyes, so it's almost laughable. It really, really is, is, is kind of crazy. Um, I, and I, I've, I've not seen results like this 
out of out of a out of a camera automatically ever before. And again, the, you know, it, this is the raw file. There's no noise processing there other than the absolute absolute standard, as you can see on the left hand side here, standard high ISO noise control. Everything else is as as normal, and it's the raw file. I haven't tweaked, I haven't modified anything. Unsharp mask is exactly as shot. So this, this is this is kind of critical to, to get this sort of mindset. Uh, and there's a couple of other sort of comparisons that I'm going to throw into the okay. mix over here. I just here. want to jump in yeah. there quickly. Um, if you are just repl replying to, uh, to, to Chris and Jade uh, chatting about yeah. the, that sort of, um, you know, once you zoom back out, uh, yeah. is that sort of, uh, you know, like cut edge uh, type of thing. That's yes. just the refresh between um uh, on the stream it's 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 yes, not it's, the, it's, it's not the image at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's my my laptop opening uh 45 million pixel files 20 million pixel files receiving live video via in full hd via the esr audio and and, and etc it's my laptop yes. it's facebook so Sounds that great, little jag, jaggy line don't worry it, it's you know, <laughs> Yeah. So just as a comparison between the 600 F11 and the 600 mil F4, I did a couple of shots of the 600 F4. Now, the brilliance of the 600 F4 is the fact that the autofocus now for eye tracking is across the entire frame. And a lot of people say, oh, yeah, no, F11, you're not going to be able to get that shallow depth of field and that blurring of the background like you will with a 600 mil F4. Well, here's a, here's a perfect shot. Yeah, this is the EOS R6. With the adapter, 600 millimeter f4 shot at f4. Um, yeah, though that that background's horrendously blurry. Um, th th there's this mindset that seems to think that you know f4 is going to be such a ma massive difference to f5.6, f8, f11. In the greater scheme of things, depending on the bird, depending on the background, depending on the environment. Even at F4, you'll struggle to get some sort of separation. So uh, I, I threw that into the mix as, as an exaggerated point. But what I wanted to show you on F4 is how little information the camera needed uh, to be able to choose eye autofocus. Now, this this is a deliberate uh, a deliberate attempt to try and catch the the bird eye autofocus out and see if it would if it would miss. Now, let me drag that back up to the center of the frame. As you can see, this bird is on the roof and this is me shooting upwards um, and it's just because it's slap bang in the middle of the frame that bird popped into the autofocus point and boom the eye autofocus locked on its eye instantly and it's, it's absolutely hysterical how many of you go you know, yes you know it's a bird yes we know it's a bird etc this is a camera <laughs> an autofocus system that a has identified that as a bird b that as its head and c that as its eye it is absolutely hysterical. And again, still using that eye control autofocus, the F4 faster lenses makes, makes sure that you have a lot more, uh, a lot more of the viewfinders to play with. And here, here's a, another very, very, very big practical example where I've, do, I've left the eye autofocus and I've deliberately put the bird in the bottom right-hand side of the picture. And this is in AI servo mode, and this is animal eye tracking. You would think it has to be in the middle of the frame, most certainly not, right down the bottom right, and you can see how the uh, the eye autofocus is picked up. Now, obviously, with the, the, the faster lenses, f4, f5.6, f2.8, etc., um, it, it's it, it's being able to take a lot more information off a lot wider part of the frame. Um, yeah, this is struggling. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and pedal, pedal the, the, lap, the laptop faster. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but um, but you can see how, how that little red square is across the eye. I just want to make sure you can see the red square. It's difficult yeah. for me because the screen is quite, quite far away. Um, but that eye autofocus has picked up that in the bottom right-hand corner of the, screen, the display. So that's just for, for the R6. If we look at the EOS R5, and I'm going to throw a couple of examples into the mix here. Um, one of the first things we did was um, a couple of days, the day before lockdown, essentially, um, I, my R5 beta sample had just arrived from the UK and they phoned me and they said, we want to test the animal eye autofocus. What are the chances of you shooting wild animals? And I literally phoned around every single game reserve, every single park was, was already closed. This is the Wednesday morning uh, before lockdown on the Thursday. And um, the, the Anne Foundation, Cheetah Foundation in, uh, in Hoodsprayt uh, said they could uh, uh, arrange a quick uh, half an hour private tour for us uh, to go and dash out there. It cost us a, a little bit of money, uh, but we had the opportunity to do a cheetah run. And this is me sat on the ground uh, with the ESR5 with 100, 400, um, shooting the cheetah coming straight at me. Now, if you, do, if you saw the, um, 
the Canon USA presentation that started at two o'clock an hour ago, uh, you'll have seen the entire sequence of images that I got over here. This cheetah is running straight towards me at uh, around about 65, 75 kilometers an hour. It covered um, the 70 meters straight in three seconds. And I managed to get about uh, 58, 62 shots in total over that time period. Not every single one of them was bang on the money, but the ones where it was bang on the money uh, was kind of ridiculous. You can see immediately there, it's not only found the cheetah's head, it's locked on the cheetah's eye, and it's bang on the money. This is uh, f5.6 at, at, at on the 100, 400 uh, using the R5. And again, yes, I've done a bit of tweaking, a bit of processing specifically here. All I've done is drop the highlights, lifted the shadows a little bit, just to make it a little bit, uh, you know, more punchy, etc. But the eye autofocus. Now that isn't a full eye, but it knows. And again, we Canon USA is showing these specifically because it's a cheetah running towards the camera at 70 kilometers an hour. And again, I've, I've chosen two or three of the, the top ones there, but um, when, when you look at the, the absolute, absolute winners, the, the eye autofocus is stunningly on exactly where it should be. Now, yes, this looks soft, just give it a second, because my computer trying <laughs> to handle- 45 the, the, million pixels, busy loading. 45 million pixels. Um, if, if the autofocus can do this, see a cheetah's eye coming towards me, you can see the red square um, at that kind of kilometer an hour. I think the average wildlife photographer in this country is going to be a little bit um, okay with that. And again, the R5 and the R6 have got exactly the same autofocus system. Now going to the, uh, the 2.8 lens, this is where I've done something very, very deliberately. I wanted to push this autofocus system and see how well it could capture eyes. And again, wild dog, no saga, caracal, no saga. When I started going, all right, let's put the eye way off to the left-hand side of the frame, number one. And number two, have a radical difference between the highlights on the, the right eye and the shadows on the left would it be able to lock autofocus on that? And there's the red, red square showing the autofocus. This is the f2.8 lens. And as you can see, it's ever so slightly unfathomably sharp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm zoom back out. But if you look at the total frame, and again, I'm hoping that your screen is moving the sort of same sort of size. Yeah, yeah, I've got where, it. where is that eye in relation to, to the autofocus system, uh, you know, to, to the autofocus points? Um, it's all the way over on the left and it's in deep shadow, the eye autofocus, no saga whatsoever. Then we threw a couple of things into the mix. Um, this is a, a cheetah parked behind a tree. And not only is it parked behind a tree, I'm actually also shooting through a crosshatch fence. You can see even at f2.8, the, the fence is about a meter away from where I am. And, and traditionally I would like, like to get right up against that fence, but you're still going to get this kind of patterning from that fence. But even there, with only seeing half the cheetah's eye and half the cheetah's head, it's identified, this is an animal, this is the face, that's the eye. And if you zoom into like 400%, you can actually see the reflection of the Land Rover in the, in the picture with me holding the great white lens pointing at, at this beastie. But just to give you an idea of how radically insane that eye autofocus is, um, it was designed for cats, dogs, and birds. It does, however, work quite interestingly on a variety of other things. Uh, this meerkat, for example, um, managed to pick up uh, the eye autofocus on, on that baby. Um, considering it's not a cat or a dog, it understood that this was an animal, understood that was, that was its eye. And this guy was moving at, at pretty radical speed. And again, shot through the uh, the bars of a, 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 a cage. Um, again, this is the 400 2.8. So, I mean, you can throw the background out and the foreground out completely when you shoot at 2.8, but, you know, quite interesting. So, uh, just to give you an idea, to prove to you that dogs most certainly do work, um, again, no no stress with, with cat or dog eye autofocus. It's, it's chosen that eye. There's obviously a little bit more contrast there, but I could manually, by hitting that dog shuttle, uh, switch it to the other eye very, very quickly. I can just choose fairly swiftly myself which eye I actually want it to be after it's locked on to, to the first eye. And again, uh, when you say, you know, is, is it in? Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's pretty damn good. And again, let's just quick quick look at the info just to confirm all the settings here. Um, with the ESR5, 25 hundredths of a second, F2.8 uh, at 2000 ISO. So 
even in broad daylight, I'm still getting 2000 ISO on a uh, f2.8 lens. Um, but you can see, I mean, that is that is just beautiful. It, it is absolutely stunning. It's backlit, but the exposure is basically held up a little bit. And you can see I've crushed the highlights down to like a minus three, minus four, specifically to bring back a little bit more detail there. But there's a lot of dynamic range to play with. Um, I, I know that people are going to ask the questions, how good is it, how bad is it? Um, it's great. Uh, let's let's wait till the, the, the final actual, you know, the the, the 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 big sort of companies out there actually publish their data. So let's have a look at the there, Roger. Yeah. Um, Jade yeah. wants to know um, or uh, wants to just uh, confirm, but the the focus points on the sensors go all the way across. Um, yes, there's, there's six thousand autofocus points. Yeah, except obviously uh, sorry, for oh, depending on the lens that uh, that you're correct. using. The amount, of, the amount of light that comes in is, is dependent. So it's 100% of the viewfinder vertically and about 98.9% .9 horizontally. Um, so it, you would call it 100% viewfinder. Um, if you go up from 5.6, F8, for example, you get less of the area. F11 gives you about 60% horizontally, 40% vertically. And F11, uh, sorry, F16, F22, it then goes to the smallest, about 40 by 40 percent of the center center zone but wherever the bird is within that zone wherever the eye is within that zone it'll pick up and we'll show you shortly i've got some shots with the 800 mil f11 with a two times converter essentially a 1600 mil f22 and you'll see how the autofocus works at f22 now here's an example of yes other animals that 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 we can um the eye autofocus picked up on we weren't expecting this uh, at all considering the shape of a rhino's head is unlike pretty much any other sort of animal. It's certainly not cat, certainly not dog. It's essentially a box with a black dot in the middle of it and two pointy things off to the side. Um, even this guy doesn't have the pointy things. This is, uh, this is a Rick Flay where uh, in order to stop poaching, they obviously uh, cut the horns off. But you can see that red square is locked onto the eye of that rhino. And I, I didn't mind because I mean, the first shot, it picked up the rhino, second shot, uh, the second uh, millisecond later, locked onto the head. I wasn't expecting it to get the eye. And when it did, I was I was radically surprised. And it didn't do it on every single frame. Uh, and the same, the same when we when we shot zebras, uh, every now and then it got it, and every now and then it didn't. Now that that one, that picture I want to leave there for a second. We're going to come back to that. Um, but I want while to show you, a while you're of moving across, Roger, while you're moving across, um, yeah. Jacques wants to know what are the chances of uh, animal eye tracking coming to the R and the RP. Yeah, un unfortunately not. Um, the eye tracking we have on that is, is human based. Um, the animal eye autofocus requires a Digic X chip, number one, uh, and number two requires a much higher degree of, uh, of processing power. So unfortunately, R and RP will not get the animal eye tracking autofocus. However, they will get the autofocus uh, performance improvement to allow for F11, F16, and F22. So that will, will come over time. But I, I begged, I begged, and I begged, and I begged, and I was told, unfortunately, you need a Digic X, because the Digic X has got that deep learning process. And the deep learning process is uh, the, the, the technology that came from the DX3 that allows it to look at the what it's seeing, refer back to a library of what represents an animal, what represents its head, what represents its eye, and then choose that as the autofocus point. And even here, for example, in, in primates, this is about 10 days ago in, in Henops as, uh, as the lockdown went to, 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 to level three. This is on the, uh, on the 100, 500, the new lens. We'll talk about those in a minute. But the animal eye focus on a monkey, not even looking at the camera, um, it's still picked up there. And again, I'm, I'm doing these specifically to exaggerate certain things. Well, the 100, 500 with a uh, 1.4 extender. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is an F10 lens. Um, at F10 at um, around about 780 uh, millimeters. Um, absolutely astonishing. The eye tracking autofocus locked on. And that, that combination, that 100, 500 with that 1.4 extender, is beautiful it is crispy 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 sharp and look at that bouquet in the background now this is me looking up at this bird on a wire it's around about four meters away from where i'm standing so it's very very close and that tree is across the road and up the pavement in somebody's garden so i've done this deliberately to get that lovely bouquet delicious type of look so that even at f10 oh man it's it's pretty and i've done again this is all about you know, you know, learning and and, and tweaking your settings to get the kind of things you want. So 
again, having a look at this, this is again the 100, 500 with a 1.4 extender. And yes, I know I've shot a lot of birds. Uh, it's been locked down for like, I'm sorry, <laughs> 100 days of lockdown uh, to try and shoot any animals. It was Rick Flay to try, try and shoot you know, any people. It's just not happening. Social distancing says hell no. Birds was the one thing I could shoot and I'd shoot a hell of a lot of. And again, this is literally yesterday. Um, this is the canary the size of the palm of your hand. The autofocus, you can see how it locked on, but the bird turns its head at the time of exposure. It doesn't matter. It's still bang on the money. For F10, look at that background. It is absolutely exquisite. Now, shooting right up close, this is a, um, in Ritflow, this is a, uh, a long claw and right next to the road, right next to the car. Now you can see what the F10 at closest focus looks like. There's, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of mess there. But in the greater scheme of things, when I look at the level of detail uh, on, on the 100% zoom in, um, oh man, I, I can count each and every single one of those tiny micro feathers. And that's, a, that's got a 750 to 780 millimeter lens through, through the new 1.4 extender. Uh, it, it is pretty, to, to put it bluntly. Um, I'm going to throw this one into the mix because this one was um, quite a radical one because uh, we were so super close to this guy. Um, this is probably at its nearest, nearest, nearest focus. There's one thing I liked about the 100-500. It, its close focus is down to three meters. And um, with a 1.4 extender, this is a um, bronze mannequin. And they are literally just slightly bigger than, than, than my thumb in terms of physical size. And not only being able to find it through that undergrowth, but being able to lock on its eye was just unfathomable. So um, I'm going to jump very, very quickly onto, I'm not going to show you anything with the uh, 100, 500 with the two times, because uh, that's at F14, but we're going to the big baby, the 800 mil um, F11. Uh, and this is where I'm going to throw this into the mix. Um, you can't blow the background at F11. And um, on an 800 mil at its nearest focus, which in this case is about five, six meters, um, the eye tracking autofocus, anteating chat, this is in uh, red flay and it's on a stick just next to the road. Um, that's F11. <laughs> the, you can't blur a background. That, that's F11. Now again, just to give you a little, little teaser of exactly what the difference is there, I'm just gonna go back to that 600 mil F4, and this is the exact same bird, round about, just a little bit bigger in the viewfinder. Now with a 600 mil at F4. Look at that background at F4. Now, again, I, you, I'm just going to prove it to you because, you know, here we go, 600 mil F4, shot at F4, uh, again, on the EOS R5. Uh, and again, the eye tracking autofocus, it's locked onto that eye. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, bite. This is this computer. <laughs> we'll, we'll blame it on my connection. Blame it on my connection. I would blame it on Facebook Live. I'm hoping that uh, the people watching this can actually sort of see this kind of thing in real time. I know in the, in the past we've had major sagas with um, connectivity and being able to show photos, etc. Oh, this, um, this one's definitely thinking about it. It hasn't, uh, still hasn't. That one's taking way too long. So I'm just <laughs> going to leave that. Uh, let, let's jump back to that, that 800 mil uh, F11 straight off the bat to give you an idea uh, of how, how exquisite that is. That, that F11 can be. Um, again, it's about knowing your 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 parameters, knowing what you can. 800 mil uh, at F11 close focus, at closest focus distance, your depth of field is about four centimeters. And when you wrap your head around that, you kind of go, well, hi, that's kind of crazy. Obviously, if the bird's in a very, very cluttered, messy background, uh, like this, for example, um, this is a white eye. And again, I've gone deliberately for the, the this, this bird is like tiny, 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 tiny. Uh, F11, you're going to get that cluttered background. But even in that cluttered background, uh, as long as you, you, know, you can find the bird, boom, that autofocus. This hasn't got the eye, despite the fact that it's white, uh, a white eye. You know, it's, it's locked on the head. I think there was way too much information for it to look around there. But it locked on the head and it held it. Uh, again, this is a stupidly high ISO shot, I think. Um, <coughs> sorry. 12,800. So you can see if I zoom in, you'll see how noisy this is. It's actually probably about two stops underexposed. It really should have been, um, you know, a lot more light in there. But even at 12,800, that is very, you can see the noise, you can see it's murky, but you know, it's still very pretty and still most certainly usable. 
But let's have a look at the situations where you kind of go, I cannot believe this is actually happening. This is one of the first shots I took with the R5 with the 800 ball F11. And I pointed at a black widow bird, not a small bird by any stretch of the imagination, but we have a bird with a black eye, with a black wattle around the eye, with a black beak, with black feathers. And it's uh, overwhelmingly black. And yes, with sufficient light on it, um, even at F11, uh and how small that eye is in the viewfinder look at the overall picture it got it and i, and I mean when i say game changer this kind of mentality it's going to make us totally and utterly bloody lazy as photographers because it, it, it's it's I, okay i'm not going to say use the words infallible because i've had <laughs> situations where i've gone why can you not see that's a freaking bird? Why can you not see that's its head? Um, in that sort of situation, uh, I was still blown away. This, this most certainly, uh, it, it, it's, it grabs it and it goes for it. Now, zebras, it found the, the eyes once or twice. Um, but for the most part, if it doesn't find the eye, it just puts this entire zone across. Now, that square gives you an idea of what the amount of autofocus points you've got using the 800 mm F11 the amount of focus points it's looking for an eye. Uh, and again, F11, look at this. I mean, it's, it's beautifully in focus. The background is great. And the background is just so sweet. Uh, and again, even this one, uh, again, the, the long claw in the, in the grass, uh, uh, again, because we're so close, um, it's been able to, to blur a lot of that background out. And you're still getting a, 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 an amazing shot um, without any shadow of a doubt. And let, let's go crazy. I mean, this, this is where we, we have to go crazy. And these are the last photos I'm going to show you very quickly. Um, the 800 mil F11 now with a 1.4 extender on. This is now a 1200 mil F16 using the uh, EOS R5 with eye tracking autofocus. Um, through a bush, it. through some sticks between leaves. No, no, it's in it's dense, it. dense, dense bush. Uh, make them dense <laughs> bush. <laughs> really? That, that, that escalated very rapidly. <laughs> but again, just, just to give you an idea that we aren't lying to you. Um, the EOS R5, 800 mil F11 plus 1.4 extender, 5,000 ISO. This is uh, 5 hundredths of a second at F16. So... It's, it's still crispy. It's still got the eye. You can see the red square around the eye. Please tell me you can see the red square around yep, the yep, eye. Yep. Sorry about this little pop-up error message. It still wants the digital lens optimizer. And it can't find these lenses because they don't exist at the time of taking the photo. But for F16, yes, you've got the cluttered background. It is messy as all messy. But if you, if you get a little bit more creative, you can shoot up against the sky. Um, yes, it's not always possible. But e even, even F16... Um, you're getting beautiful, beautiful, beautiful results. Uh, and again, please bear in mind, this is uh, a very, very, very economically priced lens. I'm going to talk about that very, very quickly. I'm going to do, go to the last one because, oh my God, you'll never be able to shoot at F22 in broad daylight. Um, and th this is typical of the, the American mentality of like, oh my God, you'll never be able to use F22. And here we go. View info. This is EOS R5. 800 mil F11 with two times extender, a uh, thousandth of a second F22 at, uh, what was that, 5,000 ISO? Um, yeah, uh, F22, there's a lot of stuff in focus. Make no mistake. The eye, <laughs> the eye still got it. Still got the eye autofocus. Um, I haven't had a lot of chance to play with this. Uh, and when I do play with it, I go, oh my God, really? Um, the, these are the, probably the two most successful shots I, I've had with the. Um, the, 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 the 800 and a two times. Uh, and to have that eye autofocus lock. Um, but that's F22, guys. Um, that, that blur there, that bouquet, delicious. This, this is F22. That's a tree with a couple of branches that are centimeters behind this. This is a 1,600 millimeter lens. Handheld. Handheld. No tripods at f22 and again let's just look at that yes the shutter speed is a thousandth of a second yeah i'd, I'd have to shoot it a little faster than that 
my hands aren't as steady as that that's for sure no, my, my hands aren't steady by any stretch of the imagination uh i i'm not a steady person but um yeah, let's talk about Ibis, shall we? So again, I'm going to close well, this down. You, oh, I've lost a bit of my background. In. Oh, before you, um, before you jump in there, um, so fix that. Okay. <laughs> Hold uh -oh. on. Right, guys, it's, uh, we've got some questions in there, uh, but keep the going. The perils of, uh, of asking. <laughs> the perils of asking my uh, five foot wife to pin up a six foot, six foot background. <laughs> Easy now, Tiger. You're going to be in trouble. Yeah. So, so Chris wants to know, um, who's the target market for these cameras? Avid wildlife enthusiasts? Um, I mean, they're obviously high-end um, market, etc. cetera. Um, let, well, let, but well, let's talk. It's affordability I mean, issues. So. Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the R5 is, is quite simply the most versatile, fundamentally amazing camera I've ever used. It ticks every single box. Mm. You want resolution, it's got it. You want speed, it's got it. You want video, it's got it. You want uh, dynamic range, you want high ISO, it's got it. I mean, up to 50,000 ISO. If you want in-body stabilizer, you want double card slots, you want durability, you want weather resistance, you want new batteries. Everything about it, it ticks every single box yeah. for the ultimate machine for pros. <sighs> yes, it is coming hopefully before the end of uh, July. Um, it's all dependent on flights out of Europe, and we are targeting a street price of 89999 in South Africa. That's where we're hoping. If the exchange rate stays where it is, that's what we're going to probably land at. Um, so, yeah, not cheap. It's cheaper than the DX3. It's around about the same price as the Sony Alpha 9 uh, 2. But uh, at the end of the day, it outperforms pretty much every one of the competitors. Let's can have some focus yeah, here. Yeah, let's have you back in focus <laughs> I mean, um, for, for me, I mean, I, I, shoot, I shoot a whole lot of things. I mean, I, I shoot uh, birds when I get the opportunity. Um, yeah. But it's, you know, it, it's things like, um, you know, events, food, people, uh, architecture, etc. And I, Anything. I, I want to have the opportunity to, to be able to shoot um, birds in flight. So 20 yeah. frames a second, fantastic. Um, at one stage, I was, I was thinking, you know, DX is kind of maybe where I need to be going, but then yeah. the DX only has 20, 20 megapixel sensor. So that, for me, I felt I was losing there. Um, you know, so, so I, I suppose as yeah. a working uh, pro, um, yeah. for me, this is, is, a, is a, a complete all-rounder. Yeah, but it's like, you know, it's one of the reasons why we call the EOS R5. It was meant to, to slot in as the traditional sense that the EOS, EOS 5 system has always been. Um, the most versatile tool for professionals. This is just taking it to an almost stupid degree. It's everything that you could possibly want in a camera. You want speed, you want resolution, you want high resolution video, you want uh, fast card slots, you want everything, everything, everything. It's got it. It, it ticks every single box. And that's the thing that uh, makes it the ultimate machine. If you only ever want to buy one camera and you're going to put every single cent into it and you want to future proof yourself, go for it. Absolutely. The R6 is the totally different mentality. Um, it is very versatile, but it was one of those where traditionally you would have give me quality or give me speed. Um, you could either have 50 million pixels five times a second or you could have 30 million pixels 10 times. It was what, you know, those were the options. The R5 gives you the best of both. The R6 gives you an incredible compromise. Uh, again, we're targeting around about 55,000 Rand. If the exchange rate plays nicely, it'll be 49 trip nine. It's not cheap. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna say anything other than the fact that it is an expensive camera. At 20 million pixels, the, level, the, the resolution is expect, spectacular. You saw that, that sunburn, the very first sh shot that we started with. There's no saga with the detail that's available there. For newspaper, sports, action photography, 20 million pixels is more than adequate. Watch the USA and the UK videos, etc. Look at the guy who shot with the R6 at 20 million pixels, and he printed a poster-sized picture, and you can read the detail of the model's clothes. Absolutely astonishing. There's no problem with it. Um, it's a smaller, lighter, cheaper version. The refresh rate on the viewfinder is not quite as quick as on the R5, but you've still got 20 frames a second if you need it. You've got two card slots, so you've got the backup if you need it. You've got the jog control uh, as you want on the back. You can get the dual battery grip with full vertical controls. I'm just rubbing that in against those yellow and black people. Um, uh, the company that's yellow and black colored i'm not going to say sorry that sounded really bad i'm pointing at you yeah, know the the brand that's colored yellow and black that makes grips without vertical shutter release 
that was a we should have pre-recorded this so we could <laughs> cut that out but anyway right. but but essentially um for anybody doing sports action but the video is still doing 4k at 60p makes it incredibly versatile at one tier down um, and if, if 45 million pixels and 8K is, is not something that's critical to you, then by all means, then you know, don't go that route. So um, let's have a look at the, 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 the big things. You know, <laughs> the big things. Um, yes, I'm holding with two fingers. That's the uh, Canon RF. Come on, focus, you bugger. Get it pointed at the lens. Sorry, this is tricky. Uh, RF 600 millimeter F11 lens. And uh, there's a reason why I'm holding it with, with two fingers. It weighs less than a kilo. Uh, standard mode into shooting position, lock it into place. And that's how, it's, how, it, how it is on your camera when you're shooting. You fold it away and, and pop it back into your bag. This, this is going to retail for about uh, 15 and a half, 16,000 Rand. I think that's the area. For a fixed aperture 600 mil lens, unfathomable. F11, yeah. I mean, you saw the results. The blurred mm. backgrounds are most certainly there. You have to be a bit more creative, but you're getting a prime. And again, compared to the 600 mil f4 in the background there, granted that's a bit of a vintage one, but 600 mil f4 lenses, you're going to come back. Camera. Yeah, there, there we go. go. You're back. <laughs> 600 mil f4 lenses are 150, 200,000 rand. Well, that's that's, that's what exactly they are. it. You know, I mean, you you now have the opportunity to, even though it is uh, f11, and I, I don't think that's necessarily a, a huge issue, um, no. to, to be able to, um, even if you take that uh, two times extender, you've got a, a massive lens for for, yeah. in my mind, something that's really affordable. Um, also, yeah. and, and I mean, and 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 backpack. You know, yeah. if if you go for go for a hike, I mean, you you, you saw us. We we hiked the Swain Crater, remember, with the the brand new six hundred mm f four, and I was going nuts about how light it was at three kilos, <laughs> six hundred yeah. at one kilo. Uh, somehow, I would have rather had that. I mean, you've got a six hundred and an eight hundred and two bodies in a, a small day pack. You know. Yeah, I mean, that's the 800. And again, I can still also hold it with, with two fingers. This is a 1.3 kilo lens. And yes, just to prove that it is there, point at the camera, block the face. Come on, focus your bugger. There we go. There we go, 800 mil. Um, and again, put it into the shooting position. It becomes quite, quite a lot bigger. But in terms of physical size, it's still 30 odd centimeters, 34 centimeters, something like that. And that's an 800 mil F11. It's going to retail for between uh, 20 and 22, depending on the exchange rate. We're aiming for, for 19 trip nine. I'd love to get there, but work on around about 21, uh, 21 and a half, that sort of area. It's um, image stabilized uh, STM motor. It uses the new DO technology that we patented, registered uh, design on. Comes with a little, uh, the tripod thread built in, which I love to absolutely yeah. pieces. And, um, oh man, an 800 mil lens like that. The, 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 the nothing, hey? Well, the mentality is, you know, that that's our existing 800. That's the 800 mil 5.6, the one that's standing there. And that's a four and a half kilo lens. Now, four and a half kilos on a on a Wimberley or a you know, sort of a, a gliding tripod uh, or a monopod is usable. But trying to shoot bird in flight using a four and a half kilo lens, probably on a DX with a, an extra one and a half kilos on the back there, you you're going to be a big bloke. You're going to have mm. to have big big hefty arms to actually sort of pull that off on a on a regular basis, or EOS R6 at, you know, just on a kilo, and that at 1.2. I can throw this around the sky a hell of a lot easier than, um, you know, than, than, than for example, the, the, the big beastie behind me. And that's going to make a, a huge difference to birding in this country. Absolutely. And, but I mean, and not only birding, wildlife. I mean, 800 mil, you, you've got to get that mindset. And this is one of the most important things I have to teach people who buy that 800 mil lens. Just because it's the biggest lens ever made doesn't mean you've got to use it to see stuff that's mm. miles away. Absolutely. The, the, cl the clincher is environmental to come into play. The further the subject is away from you, the more hazy, the more fuzzy it's going to get because of environmental. It's the amount of pollution in the air, the amount of dust, the amount of whatever, heat haze, etc. It has a major impact. This is about getting supremely close to things like that, that bronze mannequin, that little white eye where the bird is so flippant tiny and moving so quickly that the closest you can get is maybe six, seven meters. But on a, on a lens like 100, 400, even with a crop sensor, 
it's going to become you know 11 pixels <laughs> the these the 800 mil makes a huge difference yeah, absolutely. And, and for me um the, the 800 mil has been my go-to focal length for any kind of birding uh purely because i want to pick up you know really fine details of really really small things and it, and it is a mission to try and get there so we come to the other beast in the room and th this is the one that's um also taking a little bit of uh flack a lot of taking a little bit of interest on the on the internet and you'll see how the world starts talking about this one shortly that's the beautiful 100 to 500 uh, uh rf mount lens and is, is that smaller than the than the, the 100 400 in, in physical well, it, it's 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 about uh, like a centimeter longer okay uh, it's 250 grams lighter and that, that's quite radical. And that's, again, from that, that sort of lateral design um, that we've seen on the 100-400. Still has the tripod color, removable tripod color. It is an L-series. It's got the red line. Uh, it delivers that kind of quality. It is truly a beautiful lens. And again, the first thing people said, yeah, but it's f7.1. Yes, it's 7.1 at 500. From 100 to 400, it's exactly the same as the existing 100-400. So from 100, it's at 4.5. As you hit 400 in the zoom, it's still 5.6. So you've got all of that exactly the same as your 100, 400. It's just that you now have that, that extra 100 mil from 400 to 500 that now goes to, to 7.1. And we've done it deliberately. I mean, the, the, the mentality was to keep it small, keep it light. If we'd gone to 5.6 at 500 mil, We'd have added an extra centimeter on the diameter from a 72 mil lens cap, sorry, 77 lens cap to uh, bigger than 82, number one. Number two, we'd have added 400 grams of weight. And that's just, yeah, it's not viable. Then also another chunk of money on top of it. Absolutely. So optically, this, this lens is exquisite. It's, it's close focus, a telephoto, 1.2 meters at wide angle, 0 0.9. You should be focusing a meter away. That's almost a macro lens. It's quite hysterical. Um, the lens hood's exactly the same lens hood as on the um, 7200 2.8 RF lens and, and um, contains that little sort of filter window as, as, you would, as, as you want for this kind of lens. I must admit, I, I love it to pieces. Uh, there are a couple of things that you do have to remember. The, um, the extenders fit and work, but they only fit when the lens is at 300 mils and longer. As you zoom the lens past 300 mil, a new protective plate comes in at the back element and it allows you to put the extenders on. And if you zoom, try to zoom back from 300, that plate will stop the glass from touching. And it's rubber against rubber on the outer rings of the rear element and the front elements of the extender. And as you can see from the extender, um, it sits into the body of the lens quite deeply. Mm -hmm. You cannot put that onto the camera uh, you can't put it onto the lens at, at, at the zoom lower than 300. Um, and, it, and it works basically from 300 upwards. Same for the two times, uh, two times extender. Um, these are beautiful. And as you saw from the results, they fit and work on the 600 and the 800 very, very, very nicely. Sadly, they are expensive. Uh, they are, I, I, was, I was really, really disappointed with Canon uh, with regards to this, but apparently the technology that's gone into these is not so much about these cameras and these lenses now, it's about stuff that's coming. So that's quite an interesting thing that it fits and works only on these, will not fit and work on the 70, 200, 28, but on the, on the 600 mil to put a two times on there and get a 1200 mil, that extender is actually more expensive than the 600. It, it, it is quite, quite a sad situation. I, I wish there was a, a way around it. Unfortunately, the world we live in these days is is more controlling over those kind of things than we actually give it credit for. It, it's not canon profiteering. We'd love you to buy. You know, I'd love to sell this at, at, at you know at half the price and and move twenty times more. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I am going to warn you that. Um, that 100, 500 is not cheap. It's also um, in the same price as the R6. It's the, the, the over 50,000 Rand type of area. We don't know 100% as yet. Um, right now, estimated time of arrival, R5 before the end of July, touch wood. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we can get, if we can get flights, uh, the biggest issue right now is obviously getting flights out of Europe, uh, even freight. And then even if we do get a flight, getting a spot big enough to put enough cameras in. If you do want one, get your back order in pronto because the dealers are already 
back ordering, you know, since two o'clock, the phone's been ringing frantically. It's brilliant. Um, R6 ETA is August. It will be more towards week three of August, maybe week four, a little bit later in the month. The two big lenses, the 600 and the 800, will also happen in, in August. Um, the 100, 500 is more than likely going to be September, and the extenders are more than likely going to be September. Okay, so two more animals in the room. Well, sorry, one of them is in the room. The other one's, <laughs> the other one's not here. I was hoping to have it o over there, but it's, it's not over there. <laughs> Looking at the lovely EOS R6 box over there. Um, make sure I block that with my body most of the time. Um, the two other things that we do need to talk about is the, uh, the new RF 85mm uh, F1, F2. F this is not an L series coming focus. There we go. go. Uh, this is not an L series. Um, it is IS, it is uh, STM, and it is also macro. Now, this lens is stunning. We, we've had the 85mm um, the 1.8 on the market for, oh God, 20 odd years, 20, 25 years, maybe something like that. Uh, that EF mount has been one of the most famous workhorses in our, in our lineup. It's beautifully sharp. Uh, at f1.8 here so as you go off to the side of the frames man it, it is soft it is soft like nobody's business but it didn't matter because here was where the beauty was uh, so there's a big demand in the rf mount to make a cheaper version uh, of the 85 1.2 uh, and canon decided to make a very very versatile uh, lens in the 85 mm f2 um it, it's it's not dirt cheap it's not as cheap as the 85 1.8 you've got to bear in mind that ef has been on the market for 20 odd years and it's mm. you know it, it's paid for itself over the years so this is going to come in at quite you know at least 50 percent more expensive at least uh depending on when it launches at this stage it looks like S september um but small great quality 85 mil f2 sharp to the flipping corners of the frame image stabilizer uh stm motors are super quiet for for um uh for for video, video. video capability and uh more than anything else macro uh being able to focus it gives you a two to no one to two ratio uh, not two to one, sorry, yeah, one to two. So one to one is, is same size on the sensor as it is in real life. Two to one would be twice as big on the sensor as it is in real life. This is not that, this is half the size. So one to two. <laughs> Maths is not a good, good, good time for the camera to freeze. <laughs> I think that's oh, no, okay. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it did the bugger. Yeah, so um, yeah, it, it's half the size of, of real life on the sensor. But that, for, for a macro lens, is it, still astonishing. And it makes it quite a versatile thing. So it's not just about a fashion lens. It's also about beauty. So one final thing, uh, we, we mentioned it sort of in passing, was about IBIS, uh, in-body stabilizing on both these cameras. Um, at this stage, we're not publishing an exact number as to how many stops of IBIS you're gonna get per camera, because it works in conjunction with the lens. And depending on the lens or depending on the camera or the combination of the two, um, your IBIS can go from as little as three stops to as much as eight. And one of the practical examples is the, uh, the RF2870 F2. That's a lens that has no stabilizer built into it at all. But because the F2 is such a massive image circle, versus the size of the sensor. The, eye, the, the body se sensor can move around quite a lot. And despite having no uh, stabilizer in the lens, it will deliver at least eight stops. Uh, and we, that's Canon internal testing. When, when SEPA, the Canon Camera Image Press Association in Japan, when they do their final testing, uh, you'll probably find it will deliver a minimum of eight, maybe even as much as nine stops. Which is well, that's kind of crazy. It is, absolutely. But the stabilizer in the body is not an on-off switch. It's on all the time or off all the time. It decides what's best. And for something like the 800mm lens, it will realize that the sensor stabilizer... Oh, God. Oh, here we go. Oh, God again. Yeah. The sensor stabilizer is not that good for such a long focal length. Therefore, it will rely 99.9% .9 on the lens stabilizer. And because of that, you get you know, maybe less stops, but you get something that's dedicated to what you're shooting. Yeah, which makes, uh, which makes okay. it pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. you know, when I had it in my hand, I was just uh, checking out the, the, you know, the, 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 the stabilization from the video point of view. And I mean, when you, when you put that on, um, yeah. all of a sudden it, it almost becomes like a still. I, I, I was quite, uh, and my hands shake. I mean, it, it's yeah. uh, too much coffee 
etc. But um, I, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, I was actually amazed at how still that, that image on the, on the viewfinder was. Um, yeah. you know, so that's, that's very, very cool. I'm excited about that. It's crazy. Um, Sorry, I'm just realizing how bad I, I, I should have chosen f 1.4 as a bloody lens. Well, it keeps, you know it what? Keeps, there's, two, there's two lenses keeps, next to each other in the background, and I think that's where it keeps going to. Uh, and find out. No, it's keep, keep it, it go lens envy <laughs> in the background. Sorry, my bad. Um, right. yeah, yeah, I had the RF 35 1.8, and I was like, no, let's get more blur. Let's put the EF 35 1.4 in. Uh, and it's a lovely focal lens, and it works perfectly most of the time, but for some reason, it keeps losing my face. I think it's probably <laughs> the, the ear sets and the, the microphone that makes my face not look like a face together with the, the glasses. So, yeah, one final thing. Pixma Pro 300, uh, a dye-based uh, ink printer coming on again sample hasn't arrived in time as soon as i've got that uh, i'll definitely talk you through that um that is beautiful as a, as a pro printer a3 plus uh board borderless sheet fed uh printer or can take a strip over about a meter and a half long so you can do a really wide landscape type print um but the, the print quality out of that is truly and utterly spectacular. Lucia Inc's giving you that really, really incredible uh, wide dynamic range of print detail for very, very, very fine grain, black and white without uh, metamerism, without that bronzing that you would normally yeah. get from, from black inks on, on shiny surfaces, etc. cetera. Um, I'm dying to see it. I cannot, cannot wait for this printer. The samples I've seen coming out of it are truly and utterly exquisite. And it's, um, it's going to be priced really well. Up until now, we've had sort of you know, the Pro 1000, the Pro 100, and then you know, the, the, the big image program. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one sort of slots in the lineup, replacing one of those models but taking the gamut to another level, taking the black and white capabilities to another level, taking the light fastness to another level, and also giving that option, not just of A3+, plus, but also being able to do that extra... Yeah, the extra, uh, extra width, uh, the extra, panorama extra width, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really good paper handling with a variety of different thicknesses, a lot of color separations built into it. And from what I'm led to believe, we'll not only have the Canon Print Studio Pro software, which works seamlessly with DPP. I mean, you saw me playing in DPP yeah, yeah. earlier. That ca that's Canon's raw image processing software. And getting the 14-bit raw file from the camera, working on it in 16 bits in Canon's DPP, then sending it to the printer while stay staying as a raw 16-bit file. And the printer printer engine knows exactly what it's getting. You know, Canon camera, Canon software, Canon printer, that sort of link is, is, is very, very, very seamless. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I will find out before launch. I think it will actually also have the accounting software. And the accounting That'll software on, on those pro printers is, is, is magic. It really, really is, uh, really is good stuff. Uh, I, I, again, please don't hold me to that. I don't know 100% at this stage. Printers are not necessarily my forte as yet. It's been added to my product uh, lineup <laughs> over the last uh, couple of months. So I am learning. Uh, on a big scale and I do I must admit I do love them a hell of a lot uh, and this one yeah can't wait to see it and again just you know have a look at the websites a lot of the information's up there um, so it was you know as I say a massive day for us you know two cameras you know four four lenses two extenders and a printer um, that the world's been waiting for for absolutely ages absolutely. and um, you know without delving into all the specs and all the details etc you know all that um, at the end of the day what I wanted to do today was you and I have had some time to play with this. You and I have, have, have knocked about, oh, have you tried this button? Oh, have you pushed that? And um, over the last sort of month, you know, once we came out of lockdown, being able to actually go to Red Flay uh, and sit with you, you know, four meters away with a mask on and, you know, spraying 100% you know, pure, <laughs> pure alcohol in your direction. It was for your hands, not for you. Ah. <laughs> oh, but, um, but going to places like Red Flay and, and yes, as I say, going out to the, um, the aloe farm again, just to try and push the buttons, just to try and see that it is 100% doing what I think it's doing, that it's not just flash in the pan. Now, all of those sample images are not actual sample images. They're all from beta pre-production firmware cameras and beta firmware uh, level lenses. They're not final results. Have a look at the samples that are hitting the web today, left, right, and center, taken all over the world. And you'll see, for example, what the, what the final quality is going to be like and see what these things are capable of producing. And, and again, my images were purely an example of what I've been able to shoot at home 
uh, in my garden and literally outside the door over here, directly over my head, I've got a massive mulberry tree. And it's just day in, day out, that mulberry the, tree. The 20s BC mulberry tree. Well, we're at 18. Um, <laughs> it's, it's radical. I added two species this week. Um, for one tree, it is just unfathomable. <laughs> I, I, I've, it's obviously, you know, birds like mulberries. Yep. But to have a single tree having that amount of species, I, I, and our, our record was catching 12 of them in 40 minutes wow. in, in one tree. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> you know, 12 different birds in one tree is, is kind of crazy, but that's what I've been stuck with. You know, he's stuck at home with the, the greatest sports world wildlife camera, uh, known to man and going, can't go out. Oh, I've got to shoot some sports at checkers. <laughs> you know what, while, while, <laughs> while I'm doing groceries, uh, locked, locked down. And, uh, and it's, it's <coughs> so it's quite devastating but these cameras will hit the market as as the world starts opening up which is you know thank goodness this is uh it's about time we've been waiting yeah i mean i it, as you say we've we've kind of played a little bit um uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks with uh, with them and i the, the for me yeah. the 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 quality of the of the the image on that uh, the the r5 is is out of this world i i i've yeah. got nothing nothing bad to say about it um but uh, the question is, um, are you going to be doing uh, try before you buy type uh, scenarios where people can well, that, pick them out? That, that's something we, we're going to try. Um, it, it's very dependent on the availability of sample units from, from head office. One of the things that, that I have in my head that I'm going to try and do is um, set up a variety of different uh, shooting locations. Um, the plan of, plan of action is maybe to have uh, like Ritflay, Murrayvale, Intarka, somewhere in Umgeni, uh wilderness, etc., and we'll have on site a Canon Pro or a Canon friend, like an Andrew Averley in the Eastern Cape, uh, you know, Justin Derrick, or you know, Andy Lund down in Cape Town, uh, Justin and Karen Allen down in Durban, etc. And um, on a sort of weekly basis, or every two weeks, etc., we set up the option of you can book a slot. So we'll keep our, our social distancing. We'll sanitize the cameras between each one. But you meet us in a hide on Saturday morning and there's three people at a time can come in and put an SD card in an R5 with the 800 and shoot a bit. Um, so I want to try and do that. And that's given the environment that we're in. You know, traditionally we've done a road show yeah. where we'll stand on the stage and tell everybody how great it is. And there's one on the table. Um, it, it doesn't help when there's, you know, 500 people in the room. So we need to be more interactive. We need to be more sort of one-on-one. -on -one. We'll set up an online website where you can book a slot. You pop down to Marivelle, you know that 9.15, you're meeting us at XYZ Hyde. And um, you put in your SD card, there's two meters between you and the guy on the left and the guy on the right of you. Shoot a bit, we'll sanitize the camera, you, and off you go and have a look at home. The, the thing is, uh, you know, as, as, as much as we can tell you how great these are, you can go into a camera store, whether it's Cameraland in Santon, in the mall, whether it's Orms in Cape Town, whether it's uh, Outdoor Photo. Outdoor Photo is probably the best because you can actually go outside and shoot on, <laughs> on their deck. But for the most part, to, to try and see what an, a bird eye autofocus does with an 800mm lens inside a shop. And I, I mean, I think that's the that's the thing, you know. You unless you unless you actually see how the the, the acquisition is just really, you know, yeah. you know, body top half head by it's 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 yeah. <laughs> it's outstanding i yeah. you know i mean i well that, that that's the thing the, the, the demonstration is, is what's going to be the thing that, that that makes the decision yeah so yeah the plan of action is to start rolling from mid to late august and run it all the way through to december uh the the, the idea is hopefully to have at least an r5 and an r6 at each location at least mm -hmm the 100, 500 and the 600 or the 600, 800, you can get an idea uh, at, at what time, what's going to be available and who's going to be there. And as I say, there'll be a Canon friend or a Canon expert on site to, to give you some hints and tips. Uh, my, my mission, and hopefully I'm trying to get Andrew Avely on board to be able to go everywhere from Wilderness to Neisner to Plett to PE to East London <laughs> and, and drive up and down every week. Uh, it, it is a mission, but at the end of the day, um, you know, people have to see it. You, you have to see it to believe it. And going into a store, you'll get an idea of what it's capable of doing. Put an SD card in it and, um, and you'll get an idea in store. But um, when you see it actually looking at a bird uh, and watch how it goes from body to, to face mm -hmm. to eye and you go, <laughs> no, and then you follow a bird through the sky. And you're like, 
Oh, wow. And yeah. that, that acquisition, I mean, that's the one thing that we haven't spoken about is, uh, you know, when you've, when you've got a, a bird in the sky, um, yeah. that acquisition is, is instant. And, you know, as, yeah. long as, you, as long as you're following it, uh, you know, you, it's, it's going to stay you, with you. You're going to keep it. Yeah, yeah. you've got to work. Yeah, yeah. Right? make no mistake. <laughs> that, that, that was one of the things. And it, it comes exactly the same as on, on the DX3. If you give it sufficient time, if you give it su sufficient um, exposure to the subject for long enough, it, it won't let go. It, yeah. it, it, it holds and it holds like, like, like glue. And the cleaner the background, the better it is. Mm. Uh, but there's a couple of tricks and tweaks we'll, we'll talk about once we, when we start getting playing with these, once we spend a little bit more time with them. I learned something from, from my guys in the UK that they said, oh, you must try this. And once we tried that, it was like, whoa, <laughs> that changed things, uh, changed, changed things astronomically. And that was just in terms of the face tracking to tell it to look at the entire frame or to start looking in the middle and go out. Yeah. You're like just to, and then you okay. If, as long as you're the square in the middle is on something, it's going to start there, and go out. That that change, and that was that was what two weeks ago yeah. <laughs> that we that, that we we learned that little lesson. This is you know a testament to read the manual, go through item by item on the menu, <laughs> which we we just didn't do. There, there's this this is this is alien territory. I'm going to say that without even thinking twice. It feels and it handles like an S like a, like a traditional SLR. Yeah, it like feels like you, every, everything's, everything's familiar. Mm. If you, if you've changed from a 5D4 to an ESR, it's familiar. If you've not, not shot with mirrorless before, but you've shot with EOS, it's familiar. It's easy to get going. And then you go digging in the menus and like, I don't understand what that is. There's things in there. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. So yeah, no, it's 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 a learning process, uh, but it's a, a brilliant learning process. I've never been so excited about products uh, up until now. These these two babies uh, have just basically blow, blown my mind, and I can see a reason to have both of them in my bag. Uh, it's not like you know, if I've got the five, I'll never use the six. I, I you know, there's a lot of times I don't want 45 million pixels uh, of my kids' school sports day. You know, the twenties fan freaking tastic. You know, even the kids' school concert. I'd rather have the six that goes up to hundred thousand ISO than the five which goes up to fifty thousand. Oh my god, that whole stop difference. Oh, can't handle fifty thousand anymore. I need to have a hundred thousand. <laughs> How spoiled are we? I mean the, 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 these these numbers are stupendous. But but he able to do, to do a kids school concert, twenty million pixels, hundred thousand ISO and the R six is just yeah. No. Okay. Let's go do it. Uh, uh, oh, 600 mil f11, 800 mil f11. I'll be uh, you know, shooting it from across the road. <laughs> Sorry, language. Yeah. I'll beep it out later. <laughs> I have a tendency to forget we're live on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I represent a little brand. Rigid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So even though this this is a, a Canon endorsed uh, program, this is very much a personal opinion, and this is very much me talking about you know, the, the, the gear from a, a personal point of view. I wanted this to be a little bit more casual uh, rather than, you know, here's the formal presentation. It has three of these, six of those, because that's done. Yeah. The, and the, you know, go to YouTube, have a look at the European one, have a look at the American one. The American one's great because they used my cheetah shots. Uh, I was <laughs> the, moon. Um, the, 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 sheet, the cheetah shots are mentioned regularly. And thanks to these images from our, our Canon friends around the world. Like, you can't call me by my name, you buggers. You know? <laughs> Next anyway, time. Next Canon, Canon USA premiere video, you'll see some of the cheetah shots in their presentation. Uh, I, was, I was over the moon that they used them because, um, as I say, it's, it's a huge accolade for us uh, that, that we were able to be not only just you know, going out and testing, but actually being able to deliver results you know, that, that's a, of an international standard. I mean, I, I'm not a pro photographer by any stretch of the imagination. But I was able to get a cheetah running straight towards me at 70 odd kilometers and kilometers an hour and get like sort of 50, 60 shots in a sequence, bang on in focus. And if that doesn't uh, sell the, the animal eye tracking, then mm, I don't know. nothing will. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And, and, and it, is, it, it is crazy good. Uh, and the, the, the evidence is there, the, the examples are there that, um, that it can do it. And again, check the video, it's brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Thank you. And this is right, any else? other questions that, that we didn't cover? I know there was one about dynamic range. I can't yeah. give you an exact number as far as dynamic range is concerned. It's very good. Um, but rather like, wait for the third party companies to, to do that. Have a look, see what DXO Mark says and how, how it benchmarks against everything else. What I would say to you is the, um, 
the R6 is going to perform better purely because of the 20 million pixel mm -hmm. sensor. Uh, and we'll, we'll be up there with, with the DX3. But what I will say to you, um, the DX3 testing on DXO Mark is, is a little bit unfair because they've done it on the electronic shutter mode and they haven't done it on the mechanical shutter mode. And there's a distinct difference in electronic shutter because banding comes into play, rolling shutter comes okay. into play, which is why there's, the, the, there's that compromise, why they have those settings. Unlike you know, some of our competitors that you know, maybe only have mechanical or electronic, we have three options. The mechanical at 12, the first curtain electronic also at 12, and then the fully electronic at 20. But you must know that there is rolling shutter. You must know that banding under artificial lighting is going to happen. That is something that's across the board, across all brands mm. and all, all, all manufacturers. But um, having that first curtain electronic is quite interesting because there's a bit of vibration that comes on a mechanical shutter, especially at the 45 million pixels. There's noise that comes on that mechanical shutter. So if you're shooting at a really, really, really low shutter speed and you're shooting in a very, very, very quiet environment, you don't want to go electronic, but mechanical is not giving you what you want. You have that electronic first curtain. Absolutely. And I, I, you know, I keep remembering little things. There's so many, many things. Uh, to remember, uh, and I mean, we tip of the iceberg. What we've what we've spoken about today. So yeah, that's very cool. Thanks, Roger. I appreciate that. It's, cool, no, uh, thank you. Cool to uh, to finally announce all these uh, all these things. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to, uh, to kind of do the the, the 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 proper have a look and see with uh, the production yeah. cameras. Um, so yeah. yeah, we'll look forward to that, and then maybe we'll get some feedback um, uh, yeah. you know, from the guys in in the hides around the country. Well, absolutely. And I, I can't wait to get it into the hands of uh, the average Joe public. Right, right now, all the opinion pieces are Canon ambassadors. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, the, the internet's going to go nuts. The Northrop's, the Polands of this world are all going to say, well, yes, they're an ambassador. They're, they're, they're paid to pay to, to tell you it's a great camera. Like, you know, I'm, I'm paid to tell you it's, it's, it's epic at the end of the day. But personally, I believe it's epic. <laughs> it's pretty epic. But you know, but but when we when we get to get a whole chunk of your 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 you know your target audience on hunters of lights out there actually shooting with it and coming in and saying, yeah. well, bloody hell, you know, it does what it says on the box. Um, yeah, I think and, until that starts happening, um, yeah, I'll watch this space. We're yeah. on the most exciting times uh, we've ever been in uh, from a photographic point of view because this is oh, it's another world. Huh? It's another Absolutely. world. Yeah, if, if I was to say one thing that, that eye tracking autofocus is, is something like I've never experienced before and it is absolutely, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'll use your word, I'll use epic. It, it really is uh, something else. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're sitting on like about almost an hour and a half. Now. Um, thank you. Oh, wow, Robert. well done. I appreciate your, uh, your time and, um, and, you know, taking us through the, the bits and pieces. Really, really cool. Thank you. And, and what, what we'll do is once, once those um, try before you buy, uh, your friends of Canon guys are, are up and running. Um, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll let everyone know, and then they can, um, you know, make their way yeah. to the, the websites and book a slot. Well, well you know, if you're on any of the Canon databases, you'll you'll get a mail oh, saying. True, you know, yeah. you know, so whether you're on the CPS database, whether you're on our Rojo database, uh, we're going to send out a lot of the information. We want a lot of people to come and try it. You have to see it to believe it, because yeah. until then, you know, I've already got 25 emails saying I, I'd love to do an unboxing video for you. <laughs> let, let me be one of the first people to test it for you. I, I'm sorry, you know, it is tested. <laughs> you know, we don't sell things that are untested. Um, there's a million people out there who are going to want to hands on i'm really mm -hmm. sorry but i can't you know I, I, until we're well into the lifespan of it don't expect it to have to have a sample unit for 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 seven for days it, yeah. it's it, it's it's just not going to happen right now i just physically can't but um get to your local store they are going to have touch and tries on the site they're not going to be there's not going to be enough stock for between now and christmas be, for, for anybody to just go and take one away yeah but um, come New Year 2021, and I mean, it's like downright freaking scary. So it's less than six months away, 2021. Yeah, don't mention that. Don't mention how that. The hell did, how did, the hell did, did that happen? When things start easing up, when things start, start getting back to some sort of level of normality, uh, we'll most certainly put some stock into the likes of camera tech, uh, Orms, outdoor photo, et cetera, that you could then book a, a, weekend, a weekend with. Um, but as I say, right now, it's just... You know, and, and, I, and I guess I, I love that so many of you are so keen. You know, I'll do some, some great results. Let me test it doing underwater gymnastics. 
yeah, I, I, you will get there. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we, we've proven that it can do sports. We've proven it can do wildlife. We've proven it can do birds. Uh, a lot of our ambassadors have put it out there. But uh, again, we are listening. We, we'll talk. We'll let you know soon. Uh, okay. Sorry, you were right. This is going to become a two-hour session. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll can it now. How's that? <laughs> uh, well done, guys. Thanks, Thanks for listening. Roger. I hope I hope it was of interest interest to you. And sorry about my foul language and it's moving in and out of focus. You know. Yeah, we'll have to work on that. All right, Roger. Thanks very yeah. much. I appreciate okay. it, man. As always. Cheers. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs>